Hello, this is Stein here from Drone Clouds, and many people ask me what can you actually see with drones and satellites? What kind of things will I be able to detect on my farm with um, satellites or drones? And some of them would ask me, can I actually see worms? Maybe a worm like this, or a moth, or something similar. And the short answer is no, you can't. It would be kind of absurd to think that you will be able to see something as small as this. Now, of course, this was taken with a camera, maybe in someone's um, phone or something like that. And that's why you can actually um, see uh, a worm like this. But if you use a drone or satellite, these animals are just too small to actually see. So, uh, another question would be, can you actually see the effect of uh, worms on your crops? And the answer is yes. And in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can actually see the effect of worms on your crops and how you can actually detect them before they become too much of an issue. So I'm going to use a specific example um, in this video but before we get to that example a good ex analogy to use is to use the analogy of someone who gets ill. If someone gets a fever and you look at him you won't really notice that he's got a fever but if you measure the person's temperature you will see that the temperature is 39 degrees instead of 37 degrees and that would be a very good sign that something seriously is wrong and you can use a similar thing um, not temperature but you can use infrared light and measure what's happening with the plants now I'm gonna use this example so this is a barley field in the Western Cape or actually two barley fields they were planted at more or less the same time, maybe a few dates apart from each other. And on the 18th of April, if you look at this, it seems pretty okay. If you look at the early health, they look okay. They look very similar. You can see not much chlorophyll activity is actually happening in these plants. Now, if you fast forward in time and you go to, let's say, the 27th of June, you can see that something seriously is wrong with this, um, with this specific camp. You will see that... Um, uh, these green areas are chlorophyll activity, high chlorophyll activity, and these beigey, creamish color, color is low chlorophyll activity. Now, similar like the human um, fever analogy that I've used, um, if we measure crops um, chlorophyll activity, we can detect various things. Now, often the effect isn't as big as in this specific case. And in that case, you can actually use um, something else that we... Um, use and that is graphs. So I'm going to show you an example graph of this specific field. So field number eight, the pink line, was the field that was affected by the cutworm. You will see it there. And field number three is actually the field that wasn't affected by cutworm. Now here you can clearly see that this field is uh, underperforming and you would have been able to actually have been able to detect it here already. Um, if you if you had a graph or if you really closely looked at the maps over a period of times um, So to come back to the question, how can you actually monitor your crops specifically with um, Things like worms and a good way to do that is using graphs. now um, an easy way to see that is to go and try it uh, try out um, dronecloths.com um, uh, draw one of your fields there and play around with, with the maps and if you're interested in seeing one of your own fields um, crafts let us know and we can um, see how we can actually put this together for you thank you so much for listening cheers